I'm going to be breaking down the Dana White Contender Series Week 4 card, starting off with the first fight, Mitch Ramirez versus Carlos Pretis. So I watched some tape on these two. I watched uh, Ramirez's fight against Jeremy Holloway. You know, Jeremy Holloway did beat the GOAT Mike Jackson in a Muay Thai fight, so he's got a lot of weight on that. That win's got a lot of weight. But yeah, Rich, Mitch Ramirez, really heavy leg kicks in that fight. Finished it with leg kicks. I really liked that out of him. Uh, yeah, that, so that was a good performance there against a veteran in Jeremy Holloway. And then I watched Carlos Prates' fight against Charles Oliveira. Not that Charles Oliveira. There's apparently another Charles Oliveira in Brazil, so... But, uh, yeah, not not the Bronx, but, yeah, Prates, really good power. He literally got him with a jab and didn't even need to go and follow up. He just, he literally stopped the fight himself. Also had a good knee KO I've seen. He, he, this guy's Muay Thai is really nice. I like it from what I've seen. So I'm going to go with Carlos Prates here. Just, I, th I think he's got this fight. You know, he's 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 been on the big stage before. Ramirez, on the other hand, is only 7-0, but Carlos Prete, Pretes, Prates, sorry, really impressive like level of competition he's fought. Like, he was fighting in one Warrior Series. He actually has a win over a prospect I'm pretty high on, and who is from Australia, Joseph Luciano. was only Luciano's MMA pro debut, but... Yeah, I think Prates gets this done. I, I remember seeing Prates' name for so long and it only just clicked that he fought Joseph Luciano. But yeah, he's fought in the One Warrior Series, has wins there. So he's fought on the big stage. Don't know why he didn't get a contract or anything, but he's got wins against a 21-7 and seven opponent, 12-6, and 8-3, and 7-3, 20-13, and 13, like 5-0. and 0. Like he's beating good guys. And the guys he's losing to aren't bad either. Obviously, Mitch Ramirez is undefeated, but I just, I really like Carlos in this fight. Ramirez hasn't fought the greatest level of competition. His best win is 10-5, and five, Jeremy Holloway, but outside of that, he hasn't really beat the best guys, but maybe he's going to come in here with that undefeated mindset, so he just won't wilt, but Carlos hasn't lost for a while. You know, he had them losses in one. His last win was, his last loss was in one Warrior Series. But outside of that, it's on a six fight winning streak. And yeah, I, this guy's Muay Thai is just so nice. So I like him to get this one done. I don't know if he'll finish Rich Mar Mitch Ramirez because Ramirez seemed pretty tough. But I think he'll get this one done. Maybe by a late stoppage or decision, but. Yeah, I'm going with the Brazilian here. You gotta, you gotta take that win against Charles Oliveira. You know, he's got to win against our Charles Oliveira, not the Charles Oliveira, but still. <laughs> but yeah, no, nah, I'm gonna go with Carlos here. I think he'll get this one done. And then moving on the card, moving up the card, we got a fight between former Glory kickboxer Yuri Balagori versus Marco Tulia Silva actually a really hard one to pick because obviously Yuri uh, Belagarari has that uh, glory kickboxing background and all these kickboxing experience but he's 5-2 and two as an MMA fighter and his wins in MMA haven't come against the best level of competition 10-11, 5-6 and 5-3 and and is pretty good but he lost to Mohamed Arceli but I'm gonna go for Yusiri here, it's a risky pick, but I wasn't too impressed from the tape I seen on Marco Tulia Silva. Uh, I seen him in one of his fights get knocked out. I seen him in another fight. His grappling doesn't seem to actually be that good, so I don't think the grappling is going to come into play here. And if there's no grappling threat for Yuri Belaguri, I I just I favor him heavy in this fight just because yeah, like I say, if there's no big grappling for it then he should win this fight all day obviously maybe that's a bit of MMA math but yeah I don't think Yuri's grappling defense is the greatest either but I think it's good enough for what Marcos brings to the table 
I could be wrong on that, but yeah, I think Yuri Bolivarari is going to get this one done by TKO. Marcos just seems to be a bit of a brawler, so yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with the former glory kickboxer and training partner of one Alex Pereira, Pajaya, sorry, Alex Pajaya. You know, he has a win over Alex Pajaya as well. It's for Adesanya. They're just bringing people. The UFC's like game plan now is just to bring every fucking guy who's beat Alex Pajaya, I swear. Just to try and spice up the middleweight, light heavyweight divisions. But he trains with Alex Pajaya, so I don't think we're going to be seeing these two fight. But maybe, who knows, maybe we see Yuri Balagarari versus Adesanya in a rematch down the line or something. But yeah, I'm going to go with. Yuri here getting this one done by TKO, like I say. I just think Marcos seems to be a bit of a brawler. His defense isn't the greatest, and he doesn't really have a big grappling edge here. So, yeah, I like Yuri to get this one done. But, again, he hasn't faced the best level of competition. So, a bit risky pick here, but I think he'll get it done. And then moving on, we have a fight between Timothy Kumba versus Mattel Fogo. I'm going to go with, I think I'm going to go with Matteo Fogel here. Yeah, I'm going to go with him here. I think he'll get this one done, just. Timothy seems to be a bit of a brawler. Uh, but he's got some ground and pound wins. I just, I think... T Tim, if, uh, sorry, I think Fogel will be able to get this one done by submission. That's my uh, prediction here. I think he's his grappling's pretty good. He has a win over Garrett Armfield. You know, and Garrett Armfield just came back with a big win last weekend on UFC Singapore. So, yeah, I like Fogel to get this one done. And then moving on, we have a fight between Chan Cole and Thomas Peterson. I'm going to be going with Thomas Peterson here. I think he's just his grappling edge here is just too big. Just I can't see him not taking down Chan Cole and getting this one done. Chan Cole's got an interesting style, was on tough. But Thomas Peterson's only loss was to Waldo or Cortez Acosta, which if I'm rem remembering that fight correctly, because I watched it when it happened live, I, I think Costa was down two rounds. But he just came back with a when Peterson was a little gassed out. But yeah, Peterson's got a really big grappling edge, and with his wrestling, I just see him having so much success against Chandler Cole, especially if he gets Chandler Cole on his back. I don't think he's getting back up. So I think Thomas Peterson's just going to ground and pound him out to a ground and pound TK victory here. Yeah, that's just how I see this fight going. I favor him pretty heavily here. So I'd be shocked if he loses this. Chandler Cole is just like. It's very similar to a Chris Barnett. He throws spinning shit for a big fella. So, you know, maybe he catches him with something crazy, but... Yeah, I'm going to go with Thomas Peterson getting this one done. And then we got the main event. Dylan Salvador versus Bolajiki Oki. I'm going to go with... I'm going to go with Dylan Salvador here. He's got a, another guy with a clor, uh, glory kickboxing background. But the thing with him is he's winning these fights by submission. Like, this guy got a kickboxing background, but he's club and subbing all these guys. He even got a Von Flew. Like, yeah, this guy's got some legit submission skills, which I like to see out of a glory kickboxer. More wins by submission in MMA than, than TKO, which I really like to see out of him. So yeah, I'm going to go with uh, Dylan Salvador getting this one done. I just think his striking edge is going to be really big here, and then he can also club and sub if he needs to. But his opponent's a really hyped prospect. Got really good, has some really good wins on his record. His last win wasn't so good, though, an 8-13 and 13 opponent. But he beat a 13-0 and guy, but the, 13 and 0 guy, but then beat a 0-0 zero and zero guy. But beat Tuda... Domenji, who lost to Bogdan Grad afterwards. I remember watching that guy's fight. So that, that guy had a bit of a... His record doesn't speak for how good he is, that 2 die guy, but yeah, I like 
I like Dylan Salvador to get this one done. I, I really like that he's a kickboxer who's got submission skills. It's just a good asset to have. So, yeah, I think he'll get this one done. And I'll say he gets it done by a TKO. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.